Hello, I'm playing my uh, Rickenbacker 330 today. I've had fun uh, working on this. I put some bigger frets on, took the glossy finish off the fretboard, a new nut, some Lawler broiler pickups, and a mastery bridge. This thing has been kind of abused, so I thought, well, it's not a museum piece, so I'm going to modify it just a little bit. Uh, let's look at some chord shapes. I'm thinking about the C shape. Kind of a humble, non-glamorous shape, the C. Of course, if you take it up one fret, it changes a lot. It kind of works at uh, third, fourth, and fifth frets as a, a D chord. That would be a D suspended fourth, because we've got a root, third, a fourth, there's another root. There's no fifth in there, and it's okay. You can leave the fifth out once in a while. Just hitting the four middle strings. I think that's pretty neat. If you take it one fret higher, you've got an E flat. We're just doing the four middle strings. That's a root. There's no fifth, that's okay. The fifth can be implied. Bass might handle it, keyboards, the other guitar. If you need a fifth, just do a power chord. But this works. Now if you take it up one more fret, it's not very pleasant. It doesn't really work. Here's like an F2. sharp, no good. How about as a G chord at 8, 9, and 10th frets? Awesome. G sharp, no good. But here is an A7 because you've got a root, third, dominant seventh, and a root. The open G is a dominant seventh of A. So you can move that up the neck and do a few things. Using an open string works pretty good. Um, if you want to make it a closed shape, you have to get your fingers set up like this. So you got your index finger flat at second fret on three strings. Middle finger comes in, third fret. Uh, second string, ring finger, fourth fret, fourth string, pinky, fifth fret, fifth string. Now, if that's a, if that's difficult, it's understandable. We're using fingertips. We got to get nice, clear sound out of every string. No dead notes. That's a D. Let's go down to D flat or C sharp. To a D, How about a D sharp. Here comes an E. Follow along, play. Let's hear it. I can hear you. <laughs> no, I can't. Okay, here's F. They get a little easier as the frets get closer together. Here's F sharp. Here comes a G. Here's a G sharp. Here's an A. A sharp. B. C. Those are awesome shapes. Let's use uh, the E. You can add some things like some little super soul licks. around you'll catch some really cool Jimi Hendrix kind of vibes or some poppy stuff it's great so move around in that
that chord, experiment, and find new sounds, and you'll be ready to do your own thing. You won't have to just read tablature or play cover songs. You can write your own stuff and make your own sounds. That's what I like to do. I like to play covers, too. One last thing to kind of get maximum bang for your practice minute, form the major scale that uh, this chord is, is derived from. That'd be a pattern one from the cage scale, a C-shaped major scale. Work on those until you really understand how they fit together. Give me some comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. And uh, if you have questions, uh, you know, I'd like to have a discussion with you about how this works. So keep practicing.